Gonna take care of you. You gotta look after Cal, Mister. Promise me you will. I will. no trouble our way Walter be alive right now you know that don't you you think that hasn't been bothering me well it was a good friend look I know it's a little comfort to you now all I can say is I'm sorry 
Well, I guess maybe them pirates is chasing me. I'd done the same thing. If I had no call to say what I did, I'd be beholden to you if you just forget I ever opened my mouth. All the same, I'm sorry. I made him a promise. I feel kind of responsible for you. In a country for a kid to be running around in alone. Especially if the kid's a girl. A girl? Don't you go calling me no girl. Well, why not? That's what you are, isn't it? How'd you find out? I took a wild guess. You won't tell nobody. You gotta promise me you won't tell nobody. Well, why not? Because. A lot of people think like you think. This ain't no country for a girl to be wandering around in alone. Well, I got a lot of wandering to do. A lot of places to see. And I don't want no blue-nosed old ladies or dang-blasted peace officers trying to stop me. You understand? Mm -hmm. Promise? Promise. Uh, that is if you promise to come out to the ranch with me for a couple of days. Just to give yourself a little time to decide where you want to go and what you want to do. You got a ranch? My pa does. I live there with him and my two brothers. Kind of like to have you meet him. I'd like to have him meet you, too. Well, what do you say? Is it a deal? It's a deal. After I deliver this here stuff to Virginia City. Okay. Better get started. We got a long ride ahead of us. Best place in town, right here. There's the place. Hey, wait a minute. You can... Hey, you can... Hey, you. We eat us a drink up here. What do you have, little Joe? Beer. Beer coming up. Wait a minute. You're talking to me, son. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Give me a bottle of whiskey and a glass. How old are you, sonny? Old enough to bullwhack a freight wagon 900 miles across hot streaker desert. Old enough to lap up the bottom of a barrel of Monongahela. And old enough to blow the top of your head clean off. Now, how about that whiskey? You heard the man. Well, it's fun. What do you really want? Got lemonade, fruit punch, grape juice. I'm buying it. I want whiskey. And old cow's fine. I said a glass. I gotta see. Watch who you're pushing, you big ape. Well, you dirty-faced little insect. You shut your yapping trap, or I'll thumb you to death. I'll squeeze you like a tiny ant. Oh! Oh! Now you get out before I peel your head like a peach. I'm going. I'm going. Them big fellers like babies, they is. Well, you keep that up, you're not going to live long enough to spend this. Stop that drinking, you had enough. One more for the toolies, Joe. Where are we going now? Well, we're going to go... We're going to go home, and you're going to rest, and you can decide what you want to do next. And you're going to take a bath. You ain't exactly no violet, either. And that's no way to talk to a lady. I thought you weren't supposed to be a lady. Come on, let's go. I already know what I'm going to do. Know exactly what I want to do. Uh, and what is that? Want to stay with you, Joe. Want to stay with you forever and ever. <laughs>
burn. Young brother of yours got home. Won't you come out tonight? Won't you come out tonight? That's Joe. Won't you come out tonight? That's our little brother. He must have slept in the swamp all night. Won't you come out tonight and dance by the light of the moon. Hi, Paul. This here's Cal. Howdy. Cal, this is my pa, my brother Horse, my brother Adam. Oh, son, looks more like Buffalo to me. Buffalo, Cal, won't you? Joseph. Uh, Cal's just gonna spend the night, Paul. Oh. Yeah, we, we're just gonna go upstairs and get cleaned up a bit. How about that bath I promised you, Cal? Yeah, how about that bath that you promised me? Yeah, don't you worry about a thing, Paul. I'll take care of everything. See you later, fellas. Good to be home, Paul. Did you get the impression that little fellow was drunk? Drunker than a fly in a corn squeezer. Well, he does have a knack for making friends. Yeah. He sure got a big voice for a little fella. Ain't he, though? What that cow needs more than anything else than a good thrashing. Hey, somebody bring me a gold dang towel. Joe, you gonna take your partner a towel or not? Uh, oh, hey, hey. I, I was wondering, maybe, maybe you ought to take him a towel, Hoss. See, he feels kind of strange in the house. You make him feel at home, you know? Yeah, I'll make him feel at home. I'll take him a towel and stuff it right down his throat. What do you intend to do with your protege? I don't know. We Always use an extra hand around the place, can't we, Pop? I could use an extra cup of coffee. Yes, ma'am, I've seen lots. I mean, I... Oh, Lordy. What's the matter? Paul, he, he ain't no he at all. He's, he's a she. It's a gal. He's a what? A gal. Joseph. Stand up. Stand up. Did you know that he was a girl? What? Oh, no, Pa. If you knew I knew a thing like that, I, I'd certainly tell you about it, wouldn't I? I don't think you'd have told us. Joe, I'm going to tear you limb from limb. Howdy! That man's a peeping Tom. <laughs> <laughs> now, ma'am, that ain't true. I, I mean, Cal. I, I'm just coming up there to give you a, a, a towel and I... Oh, Lordy. Ma'am. Seems we've made a little mistake here. What might your last name be, ma'am? My last name might be Canary. Well, then what might your first name be? Jane. 
Jane. Well, how come you call yourself Cal? Well, that's short for calamity. Calamity? Calamity Jane. Nice. Aren't you tired? Tired? Why should I be tired? Had a long, hard day today. You're not tired? Nope. Oh, I am. I am tired. Hey, you know what we have to do tomorrow? First thing we gotta do is get you some new duds. Can't have you walking around here looking like one of my brothers. <laughs> What's the matter with the way I look? Oh, nothing. You look great. <laughs> look great. You know, I, I like you, Joe. Don't guess I ever met a fella I, I like better. You ain't nothing like John. John? Who's John? He's the fella I was running away from. Always chasing me. Wants to marry me. But he's a dentist, and I just couldn't stand the thought of marrying a man who spends most of his time looking down people's throats. <laughs> but, uh, speaking of marrying... A gal like me would make a fella a mighty fine wife. Why, I can ride with the best of them. Snap a fly off an oxen's ear with a bullwhip four times out of five. Clear leather faster than a cat can sneeze. Drink more whiskey and a... I guess that don't sound too lady or wife-like, does it? <laughs> no, it doesn't. Maybe I... Maybe I ain't too good at talking like a woman, but I ain't so bad at acting like one. Joe. Jojo, nice is all you have to say? Why, this is the latest fashion from Paris. Well, Mademoiselle is very chic in this dress. And she's very pretty. You know, she will be the most beautiful girl at the fireman's ball on Saturday night. Fireman's ball? Uh, well, I, I guess I just ain't the type of them fancy shindigs. Oh, the, the hair, Jojo. What are we going to do with her hair? Well, we can always cover it. Mais je vous en prie, c'est un sacrilège, un beau chapeau comme ça. Voyons. It's Johnny. Hey, Babette, wrap up those other dresses, we and send the bill to Paul. Oh, merci, yeah, Juju. Johnny! I just knowed you'd follow me, Johnny. I just knowed it. Who's he? Well, that's Joe Cartwright. He just got me all gussied up. How do you like it? I was very considerate of Mr. Cartwright. Wasn't it? Well, what are we standing around here for? This is a big day. I got me a brand new dress and two fellas. Let's just go in this here saloon and lap us up a belly full of drinks. Let's just do that. Hey, listen, you, you two must have a lot to talk about. Are you will uh, join us, Mr. Cartwright? Well, very kind of you. Don't mind if I do. Doc 
colony. Down. Hey, Chubby. <laughs> Chubby. I, I'm sorry, ma'am, but we're not allowed to serve no ladies in here. You served me yesterday. If you're smart, you'll do the same today. You... You mean she's the same? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's him. But... You heard the lady? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I, I sure heard the lady. Jane looks real pretty. That was nice of you to do that, Mr. Cartwright. Why? Did you do it? Why? Well, I just felt the clothes she had on weren't fitting the lady. And they wasn't. And you consider that your business, Mr. Cartwright? Ah, oh, come on. Don't be so formal. Just call me Joe. All right, and, uh, and you can call me Doc. Oh, Doc? Holiday. Uh, how holiday? Oh. It's, the, it's Doc, Doc Holiday. He's that dentist I was telling you about, Joe. Oh, the, 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 sure, the dentist, the dentist. My teeth are all good, all good. It, it's a real pleasure to see you, Doc. Well, uh, let's keep it that way, shall we, Mr. Cartwright? Sure, sure, Doc. I, let, let's. And now that uh, we understand each other, I'm sure you'll excuse us. Hmm? Oh, yeah, I got I got I got a lot of things to do anyway, and you probably have a lot of things to talk about. Hey, now, wait a minute, Doc. No, 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 please, please. I, I, I got, I've got to go pick up your clothes, and uh, I got to go shopping, and I, I got a lot of things to do. You, you, you just, you, you know. You had no call to do that, Doc. Didn't I? No, you didn't, God dang it. You're coming away with me now. I ain't going nowhere with you, Doc. Let alone marry you. Now look, Doc. It ain't that I don't like you, because I do. I got a deep sisterly affection for you. But it ain't enough for marrying. It just ain't. And him? I don't know. That little Joey, he might be just the fella for me to want to settle down with and be a lady. A lady. You will never be a lady. No more than I'll ever be anything but a... a man running to meet oblivion. Folks like us, Cal, we... we got the devil on our coattails. And he's ridden us and whipped us so long we're used to it. And maybe... maybe we even like it. We're much alike, you and I. And we need each other. And I'll kill the man who tries to take you from me. <coughs> we gotta do something about that cough, Doc. Yeah, I... Uh, I gotta do something about that. Maybe you're right. Maybe we do have the devil on our coattail. But I gotta try. I gotta see for myself. Right out here and give me a chance. If it don't work, I'll come a-looking for you, I promise. You won't have far to look. I, uh, I'm not going anywhere. Suit yourself, Doc. Well, I... I gotta go along and get me some more of that ladylike wearing apparel. <laughs> In that event, then, Joseph, I suggest that the most sensible thing that you could do would be to take Miss Canary into town first thing in the morning and get her a room. We don't need any trouble with Doc Holliday. Yeah, Pa, but I can't do that. It, in a way, I kind of owe her my life. Well, she's just liable to collect on that debt if you don't get her out of here. Yeah, and then, then, too, I made that promise to Wall about looking after her. I'm not asking you to. 
to break your word or shirk your responsibility. I'm just saying that under the circumstances, it would be much better if you got her a room in Virginia City. I'd like to, but she won't go. What do you mean she won't go? She just won't go. Besides, I'm, I'm not afraid of Doc Holliday. Oh. Well, I can take care of him. Well, Joe, it ain't like we ain't got no confidence in you. It's just that... Well, I've heard tell that, uh, that feller Holiday done, done killed himself 15 men. He ain't even worked up a good mad yet. How do you like it? You don't like it? Oh, no, it's, uh... It's, it's very nice. Very nice. Well, we have some work to do, fellas. Um... You, uh, you come out when you're, uh, when you're ready, Joseph. Hey, Papa, when you Paula. are ready. Understood? Miss Clement, you do look nice. Real pretty, as a matter of fact. Thank you, Hoss. Hoss. Oh, yes, Paul. Adam. Hey, hey Pa, what? What's your paw mean? Ready for what? Oh, well, it just, uh, uh you, you see, we, we figured that uh, since Doc was in town that you probably might like to be closer to him. That is, just till you pull out. Why? Well, well it's just, just like you said. You've known each other for a long time, and, uh, and Doc is so fond of you. Well, I know if I was a Doc, I'd, I'd really be jealous. Would you, little Joe? Would you? Well, yeah, if I... So, so, so what, what I thought we'd do is, in, in the morning, we'd get, we'd, uh, get up and get in the wagon, and I, I'd take you into town and uh, get, you, get you a real nice room in the hotel. I ain't going, Joe. You ain't? No. How come? I got a big phone for you. You, you, you and me. Yes, I do. It's like I told Doc. It's like, like you told Doc, huh? Mm-hmm. He said that him and me, we got the devil on our coattail. That we need each other. Oh, you know he has a point? You know you do. No. I don't need Doc, little Joe. I need you. I said I thought you was just the man to make me want to settle down and be a lady. And uh, you, you told that, that part to Doc. And you is. I'm going to stay right here and take care of you and love you and never, never leave. Thank you. There's that peeping Tom again. No, ma'am, not, not really. Paul just wanted me to come back and see if he was ready, Joe. He's ready. You go tell your pa. You tell him all about us. <laughs> Looks like you handled that real nice, Joe. Oh, shut up. Whiskey.
wasn't very friendly. It wasn't meant to be. You got until midnight tomorrow to convince Jane to quit playing at being a lady and ride out with me. And at exactly one second after midnight, I'm going to kill you, Mr. Conrad. Look, now, I've, I've tried to be nice to you, Mr. Holliday, but you're pushing me just a little bit too far. Now, now whatever Calamity wants to do with her life is her own business. It's not mine and it's not yours. You, you may be older than me and maybe a little quicker on the draw, but I'm, I'm not backing down to you or anybody like you. They say I'm dying. That means I haven't long to get things I want out of life. And I want that girl. And you better see to it that I get her. You see, when a, when a man knows he's dying, it just doesn't seem to make much difference whether it comes slow or fast. And that gives me a terrible edge over you, Mr. Cartwright. Yeah, well, we're going to have a, a big ball here Saturday night in town, big dance. And I just now decided I'm going to ask Cal if she'd like to go to it with me. Well, if you'd like to see her, why don't you, why don't you drive around? I'll be there with Cal. Oh, I, I will, Mr. Cartwright. You can depend on it. I will. I'll be there at exactly five minutes to midnight. All right, Doc. Anytime you say. What are you doing? Uh, I, I was I was just lo loosening up a bit. Why? There's no special reason. It's just good, it's good for you to loosen up. Hey, does Doc know you're taking me to the ball tomorrow night? Sure he knows. He ain't gonna like it. You know, what Doc likes doesn't concern me. I see. Guess a fella had to be mighty fond of a girl to get in a gunfight because of her. Wouldn't he, little Joe? I suppose he would. Especially if he was getting into a gunfight with someone like Doc Holliday. Guess he'd have to be more than just fond of her. He'd have to love her. Otherwise, it wouldn't make any sense. Well, Cal, there's a, there's a lot of things in this world that don't make sense, but that man just goes ahead and does them anyway. You don't love me, do you, Joe? I like you. I like you a lot, Cal. I see. You know, I, I ain't never been to a ball before. Ain't nobody ever asked me. In my whole life, this is the very first. I'm beholden to you, Joe. I, I'm mighty beholden. But I ain't going. What do you mean you ain't going? I just ain't going, that's all. Oh, I don't belong at that ball no more. And a raw bone plow horse belongs in a show ring. A lot of fancy frills and gigaws ain't gonna make a lady out of me, not even for one night. Besides, I ain't so sure I wanna be one. All scunched up and tied together like trussed up chicken. Hey. Now you look at me and say that, and then I'll believe it. Joe Doc will kill you for sure. Well, don't you worry about that. That's my concern. You're going to that ball, and you're going with me. But Joe... I don't want to hear any more about it. I made up my mind. All I want you to do is get real prettied up tomorrow night. I want every man at that ball to be jealous of me. Oh, Joe. I am beholden to you. Awful beholden. And you ain't gonna be sorry. I'll promise you that. You ain't gonna be.
Allô, allô, mademoiselle, bonjour. Good morning. May I be of uh, service to you? Morning, bad lady. I'm, uh, I'm looking for one of them little uh, fur pieces I seen them fancy ladies wearing. Oh, je sais. Mademoiselle is referring to a choker. Like this. It is made of the finest of mink. That varmint looks like cow stomp squirrel. That ain't it. Custom squirrel. Well, I will have you know, this is custom mink. Now, what I want, it's, uh, it's bigger than that and rounder and fatter and... Ah, oh, oui, mademoiselle, je sais ce que vous voulez. You are speaking of a cape. Oh, mademoiselle has mwah, excellent taste. Oh, la, la. Mais certainement que j'ai ce qu'il vous faut. Voilà, voilà, tiens, tiens. Ça, voilà, voilà. Tiens, c'est joli. Ugh. Mais mon Dieu, comme vous êtes donc difficile à plaire, mademoiselle. What I want is, well, it's round and it, it kind of looks like a, a coonskin cap with a top shot out of it. Oh. And you can, you can put your hand. There it is. That's one of them. Oh. Nice dance. Looks like little Joe's enjoying it. Uh, did he have to carry that polecat while we're dancing? Yep, feel plumb naked without it. Besides, it ain't no polecat, it's mink. Yeah, it looks like a polecat. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. By the way, it's customary to check your gun at the door. I, uh, won't be staying long. Excuse me? Dr. Holliday. May I, Miss Canary? The pleasure is mine. Joseph, don't you think you've dipped into that bowl a little too often tonight? No, I'm, I'm, ju I'm just thirsty, Pa. Joe, it's getting late. Ain't you about ready to give up? Let's go home. Don't you want to? I guess he don't. I've also noticed that uh, ever since you got here tonight, you've been looking at that clock every five minutes. Why? Why? Huh? Well, no reason, just want to know what time it is. Is there something you haven't told us? No. Joseph? Listen, it's nothing I can't handle. Joe, you ain't fixing to have no trouble with that Dr. Holiday, are you? No, not, not unless he starts something. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Nah, it's just that Doc Holiday said that that one, one second after midnight, he was gonna kill me. <laughs> now, look, son, you're gonna get right on your horse, right now, and right for the Ponderosa. I can't do that, Pa. You're no match for him, son. You're no match for him. Now, do as I ask you, right for home. Pa, I just can't do that. Tomorrow morning, everybody in Virginia City, no Doc Holliday faced me down. You, 
Chased me out of town, sent me back to hide in the ranch. Now, I just can't do that, Pa. You gotta understand. Adam, will you talk some sense into your brother? If you talk to him, he's your son. Hoss. Boy. I reckon little Joe sort of got himself into a pickle. He ain't but one way out of it. You harm little Joe, Doc. You are gonna be sorry. Awful sorry. He's got exactly three minutes to live. You see, Cal, a man has committed himself. There's no other way he can go. Ain't there now, Doc? Ain't there. That's a pretty uncomfortable muff you have there, Cal. It ought to be. There's a Colt 45 right in the middle of it. I'm joking. You won't be laughing, Doc. If you harm little Joe, I'm gonna blow you clean in two. You can believe that. Sorry, Cal, but it's too late. I just can't back now. And there isn't any other way. You better try and find me. You better search yourself to find a way. Nobody really wants to die, Doc. Not even you. Besides, you said we was alike, that we needed each other. Well, I think you're right. And I'd hate like blue blazers to have to plunk you out on Boot Hill and ride on alone. Think, Doc. Think. I'm Ben Cartwright. Just a word of warning. You're a known gunfighter, a killer. I thought you should know that if you hurt my boy, I'll see that you're hung from the highest tree in Virginia City. And I've been in towns all over the West, Mr. Cartwright, and I can't begin to tell you how many times I've listened to that promise. But as you can see, Nobody's hanged me yet. You listen to me, Doctor. You touch my little brother. And the only way they'll ever hang you will be piece by piece. You gentlemen ought to try this punch. It's uh, delicious. Yeah, we'll drink hearty because it's going to be hot and dry where you're going. I've known just where I'm going for a long time, mister. A day one way or the other isn't going to make that much difference. Anytime you say, Doc. Better get out of the way, Cal. Count to three. Three. One. Two. Sorry, Joy. I guess maybe any differences we have will 
I just have to wait. Come on, Cal, let's, let's get out of here. Wait a minute. Canary will leave when she's getting ready, not until then. It's all right, Joe. No, no, it's not all right. Not all right at all. I promise you this evening, and nothing's going to spoil it. Try to pull yourself together, Doc. You need me, I'll be around. Got nothing to worry about now, Cal. You went and backed him down? <laughs> you sure did, little Joe. Why, you got him running skitter and a bee stung jackrabbit. <laughs> you're all heart and you're all guts. I just got a drink with a man like you. Pour me one, will you? I'd love to. He's determined to get himself shot. Yeah, we better get him out of here. Yeah, before he gets shot or gets drowned in that punch bowl. Mm-hmm. Well, don't just stand there and play something. Enjoying yourself, little brother? Oh, having a heck of a time. You see a way back him down? I sure did. Isn't that was, beautiful? I'm real proud of you, little brother. Good night. Good night? Yeah. Awful nice knowing you, little Joe. Spider juice has a real kick to it. Well, put him on his horse, boys. I'll be right out. Too bad, I never could cotton to a fella can't hold his liquor. I'll be riding on, Mr. Cartwright. All right, Cal. I'll be saying goodbye to you. Fella can't hold his liquor, ain't nothing but a boy. I want to thank you for giving my boy back to me. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright, for giving me the chance of knowing him. Mr. Holiday. You ought to do something about that cough. Yeah, I ought to do something about that. What you said about you and me, Cal? Sure, Doc. We got a lot of places to go and a lot of things to see. We ain't hardly seen any of them yet. Doc, I'm thirstier than a bullfrog on a hot skillet. Can you fetch me a drink? So long, little Joe. 